And good morning, faith community and the rest of the world. As we are here for the 5 Before podcast, we are glad to have you today. We're going to give everybody just a few minutes to connect with us and to log on this morning. And we're really excited to be coming live to you from Faith Community Church. Uh, my live studio audience today consists of Aaron and Aaron alone. So it's always good because Aaron gives me the feedback, tells me how bad I do uh, when it's not good. And uh, when it is good, he encourages me a little bit. So that's good. So I want to thank Aaron. I, I really don't take the time to thank Aaron enough for all that he's doing to make this possible. And for those of you who appreciate uh, this podcast and are a part of what we do every day, I want you to know that it could not be done without Aaron, and we don't ever tell him thank you. So if you guys want to send him a little message, tell him thank you for his hard work and help him making this possible. And again, uh, we've had some some great guests. I do, I do apologize. It was funny because Thursday we had a little bit of um, a, a miscommunication and I'd sent a text message to Aaron early that morning, and, but you got a bonus episode. So it's kind of like in a, a McDonald's bag when you get it, that bonus fry that fell out that you find later that you're really excited. Everybody loves the bonus fry. So you got a bonus uh, episode of the podcast last week. So, But we got some people logged on this morning now. It's good to see everybody. Glad you're here. Hope you're having an awesome day. I know it's the first day at work since the time changed. Everybody's probably really sleepy, so I'll do my best not to put you to sleep. So here we go. Um, as we get ready uh, this morning, I was thinking about one of the stories that I actually preached on recently. And this is kind of going in tandem with what I did in the bonus episode on Thursday when I talked about the delaying moments of God and not giving up on the promises and uh, I was reading in John 5, and I was thinking about the man that we read about that says that for 38 years this man had been lame, and he was laying next to the pool waiting on the water to get troubled because, um, again, he had been lame, and he had been lying there for 38 years. So one of the things that we know is that this guy was experiencing something that a lot of us experience in life sometimes. He was experiencing that waiting room, right? Nobody likes a waiting room. Nobody likes a waiting room. When you go to the doctor, nobody likes to sit in the waiting room. Uh, nobody, when they're uh, going to Six Flags, likes to go through those buildings and those rooms where you're waiting in line. Nobody enjoys a waiting room. And so this guy was in a waiting room for 38 years. And it's really, it's really interesting because the Bible says that he made several attempts. And some people even believe that once a year the water was troubled there. And it happened once a year. So that means 38 times if he was lying there for the 38 years, the Bible tells us he was. 38 times, I want you to imagine, he gets up and tries to get in the water when it's troubled and he doesn't make it. And someone beats him to it. 38 times he thought that his waiting room was going to be over. Uh, how frustrating would that be to know that here you go, you got your moment and you think finally it's going to happen, and then boom, somebody jumps in, somebody else is healed. How frustrating would that be? But, but I want to encourage you and to remind you that Jesus looks down at the man when he comes on the scene. And the man is frustrated. Uh, he's growing impatient in his waiting room experience. And Jesus looks down at him, and this is what he tells him in, in John chapter 5. It says, rise, take up your bed, and walk. He tells him right there in that moment, he says, listen, you don't have to stay in the waiting room. And while last week I gave you a bit of encouragement about people who were waiting on the promises of God to come and not to give up, I want to talk to you, to, to you from a different perspective today and to remind you, I want you to know that what you need is not in the pool. What you need is where you are. And you already have what you need. And I want to encourage you to look at the profound words of Jesus here when he says, listen, you've been waiting to get in the pool. I want to encourage somebody right now, and I want to tell you something that I know is difficult for many of us. I know for me even, I struggle with this. When, when you spend your life trying to get to the people that God is working through or the places where God is moving, sometimes you miss what God can do right where you are. 
And I'm one of those guys. I love revivals. I love to study the great moves of God. I love when God moves in great ways. In fact, one of my great friends in Dawsonville, Georgia, Pastor Todd Smith, um, is leading one of the epic revivals in the southeast to to come through um, right now as we speak. And I'm watching and I'm listening to all the testimonies. And there are a lot of people that say, man, I need to get to Dawsonville. I need to get to the uh, to the revival that's happening up there. But I want to tell you, no, no, no. You, you, if you think that way, then you miss what God wants to do right where you are. And that you don't have to get to the right people all the time, and you don't have to find yourself where God is moving all the time. You have to understand that Christ is in you, that the Holy Spirit is in you, and that he wants to bring you out of that waiting room, not if you get the right guy to pray for you, not if you get in the right building where there's a revival happening, but God wants you to understand that you can rise and you can walk right where you are because as Jesus was trying to let this guy know in John 5, I'm here with you. Like you're not waiting on the pool to get troubled. You're not waiting on the water to stir up because the only reason it stirs up is because I'm there. And what you're looking for that's there is also where you are. And I want to encourage you today in the middle of this Monday that you're not looking for what God is somewhere else. You need to understand that that's only happening there because God's there. And God wants you to understand that he's with you right now where you are in the same way. So you don't have to wait in the waiting room because you're not seeing the water trouble there or because you're not with those people. But you need to understand that right now God wants to encourage your heart to say, I'm with you. And I want to do this miracle, and I want to perform this move in your life right now. So I hope that encourages you today, because I do know uh, the struggle of the waiting room. I've been in waiting rooms with God and with seasons of my life. Um, but it's amazing, because when you just get to the point where you're willing to say, I'm going to walk in faith right now regardless, you know, because I know he's with me. And um, God's going to show up, and he's going to do what he can do. And those are the things that you can't do. So, again, we just encourage you with that today. And I hope that, hope that speaks to your heart. Again, please uh, comment below if you need anything or uh, any kind of a testimony that you have about what God's doing in your life. If you have a need right now, I will tell you this. But an amazing testimony yesterday from our church that I got this morning that I want to end with to show you that it's not about, you know, um, what's happening somewhere else, but God wants to do it right there. We had a lady at our church who has a one-year-old grandson uh, who was uh, basically pronounced brain dead on Friday, and we had been praying for a week, and we had been believing for a miracle. Well, on Friday, she got the message that he was essentially brain dead and that they kind of were close to giving up hope. So I, I, I prayed with her after service yesterday, and I said, listen, don't, don't listen to that. That might be a fact, but that doesn't mean that's the truth of God. And so we're going to still stand on healing. Well, that was yesterday right after church that we prayed again after we had been praying for a whole week and got a really bad report on Friday. We were in that waiting room the whole time. Well, this morning we get up, and she sends me a message first thing this morning and says that baby Braxton, who uh, is the name of her grandson that we've been praying for, she said baby Braxton uh, moved his arm and his leg and they put eye drops in his eye to test his eyes and his eyes uh, responded wonderfully, which was an absolute miracle to show that he wasn't brain dead. Um, and man, she was just rejoicing in God today because of that miracle. And guess what? Baby Braxton wasn't at our church yesterday. Uh, he wasn't in the service. I didn't physically lay my hands on him. Uh, but we had a moment of intercession, and it just goes to show you again, God's where we are, and God's where he is, and God's where your need is. So just take that and, and, and just be encouraged by that today and know that, that God wants you to um, not get frustrated with the waiting room. He wants you to step out in faith while you're in the waiting room. So thank God for that. So let's pray. And um, again, we want to thank you for joining us. Make sure you click that share button. Don't forget to download the Faith Community app where you can keep up with all of our podcasts, uh, not just the five before, but our Sunday services, um, all different types of things. Make sure you uh, log on there and download that app. And then we have our website, faithcommunitylc.com, that you could go find out uh, other information from. So anyway, let's pray. God, I thank you for this testimony today, and I hope and I pray that that alone was enough to inspire someone to see that you're moving in a powerful way today. And uh, God, I thank you right now that uh, some of us are in waiting rooms, but you're with us in the waiting room. We're not in the waiting room because you're not with us. We're there, and you're waiting on us to take a step to get out of that moment, to see that miracle happen. So I just pray right now that you would encourage somebody's heart, that they would know right now 
that. It's not about waiting till the water is stirred somewhere else. It's about recognizing when God is with us where we are and stepping with him in sync in those moments. And so, Father, I just pray that you would just let them, um, first of all, find peace and joy in the moment that they're in right now that may be frustrating. And I pray that they recognize your presence that's with them and that they will step in faith in accordance with your presence. And God, because of that, you're going to do miracles, signs, and wonders today. Somebody needs healing, they're going to take a step of faith today and you're going to heal them. Someone needs a financial miracle and they're going to take a step of faith today and you're going to answer that need and you're going to uh, perform that miracle, God. And I believe it's going to happen in all different walks of life, all different ways. You're going to pour your spirit out on their life. So I just pray again that you would encourage them and let them know that you are with them right where they are. And um, God, that they can come out of that waiting room as they respond in faith. So give them the boldness and the strength to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Again, uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 1155 for the 5 before.